My name is Justin Lepper. I am the owner of the Artistic Armory, and we are currently here at Dr. Lepper's Design Circus. I'm Mark Goddard. I'm from uh, London. I'm a full-time graphic artist, working for a company the name of uh, Printed for You, West Charles. Paloma Solamente with Culture of the Census. Oh, I'm, I'm Vincent Koo. I'm also Culture of the Census. <laughs> Thank you. So, I always like to do the happy-go-round interviews, but this is totally different from what I see behind you guys. Uh, it's all over Facebook, I've been getting emails, text messages, voicemails, you name it. Uh, what happened during First Friday? So on previous Thursday, we were getting started at 5 o'clock. Our friend crossed the way. Uh, was having a brand new opening at his gallery. I went over to the gallery and just as artists we should be ambassadors to each other. I wanted to see his new show. I went over there. The man was having some technical difficulties with his electric. Couldn't get lights and his computers and things to get working and because this is something that I'm quite good at, I helped him through, you know, some of the early time jitters that occur during an opening. And so I came back to my gallery. I had a gallery sitter at the time that displayed some of his art here. Got working back on the mural that we've worked on now for three months. I'd say that there's approximately between 120 and 160 hours of man hour put into this. And so I worked consistently until approximately 10 o'clock, which as all the traffic died down across the street, I left my gallery sitter in here. I went back over to the place. I met the people that were showing over there, the artist who owns the gallery and his assistant. He came back towards the bar and bistro to have a little celebratory drink, at which point the, they actually all broke off from our crowd. Me and his assistant came back up here and actually started working on the mural again. And this person came back. So he shows back up here and he says that, you know, he's broke, which I know why, uh, that he doesn't have much money. He's a struggling artist. So he asked me if I can get him a beverage, which I go downstairs, and he goes, can I work on the painting? And as he is a classically trained artist, is very skillful, I said, yes, you can, but you have freedom to accentuate it and to work on it, at which point I go back downstairs, I return back with three drinks for all of us, uh, his assistant, uh, this person and myself, and at which point I came back to seeing that five full tubes of oil paint had been squeezed from the very top uh, right hand corner, almost in a diagonal fashion across the whole mural. Uh, my first words out of my mouth were, what the fuck are you doing? And then after that, I ensued to actually pull uh, every rag out of the place and start to wipe off the contents of the painting. Uh, we had to use our own clothes to facilitate pulling the paint off because we ran out of rags to use in this process. He still contested that he was doing art, at which point, uh, you know, when we said painting, there's a difference between painting and there's destruction, which I made it very well known that he was, he destroyed, you know, what we had all started, you know, work on for these three months. And within a short amount of time, he was probably tired of me uh, pretty much uh, writing him verbally. And he said that he was going to leave, at which point he said, and I quote, uh, thanks for letting me fuck up your painting at which point I took these two very red hands that I had wiped the whole painting down with and wiped them all the way down the length of his suit jacket. He had exited the building, at which point I slammed the door and locked it so that he could not re-enter because at this point it was late enough that everything had shut. And so the next day the artist had arrived because we have a reoccurring theme of artists, Mark, Fernando Reyes. We never got to see Tom DeSesti, but as we've put in this, these hours over the last three months, we have 
built quite a little camaraderie between all of us and to see the reactions of the artists, to see the reactions of our family members that had come in and seen the amount of hard work that we had put in, uh, what I would believe is a, was a beautiful painting, and then to see it all wrecked, and then to see then on that first Friday, the people that have been showing up for the last four months, <coughs> three months, to uh, watch the progress as it has progressed, you know, and not one of those people said that what had occurred accentuated or beautified this collaborative art effort, which we brought, you know, between 10 and 20 people in on over the last three months. He's remorseful because he is now uh, being shunned uh, uh, via me social media and other forms. Uh, at which point he only he wants to come and help fix it, but I'm sorry to say that he will not be invited back to our gallery or our collaborative art pieces ever again. Our friend here, Mark, would have a lot to say because he has been here since the beginning of the piece. He's got approximately 30 hours of work. I mean, we even showed up last week on a Tuesday and painted on it for a couple hours in between our jobs and our actual day-to-day -day responsibilities. Well, my first reaction is when I came on Friday, I was called, what is happening? How can somebody do something like this? We spent a lot of hours on this. After work, I'll come straight to here. I'll finish work at 4.30. I'll phone Justin so I'm coming over to help you. I'll be here till what, 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock, just to put my extra hours into this piece. Yeah. Even my family members, I even told my wife about this, and she's even, she's even shocked. She hasn't been to the gallery to see it, but another family member came, my sister-in-law, and my sister-in-law's son and daughter, they came. She asked me what happened, and we just explained to her that someone came and destroyed the work, and she's into art. I helped her with her art, and she, she just didn't like what was going on. She thought it was wrong for someone to do this. She thought it was a really beautiful piece until someone just came and just put red paint all over it and just destroyed it. She wasn't happy at all. I'm still angry, even though it's been about three days, I'm still upset with what's happened. We don't want to say any names. It's all over Facebook. Like I said, I've been getting emails, inboxes, you, you name it. And what was extremely weird is that this person, this gallery owner, tried to defend himself, saying that he was adding more light to the mural, which I don't get because I've been, myself and, and photographers that I'm uh, affiliated with, we've been recording the whole process, and the mural was beautiful. I mean, there was no need, there's no excuse. For this, if, if you ask me my opinion, this is an artistic crime. And if we don't stand together as a community, what's gonna happen next? I'm still in shock, everybody's still in shock. This is not fair. Uh, 160 hours, 100 to 160 hours during three months. And this is what happened, I mean, where's the Eiffel Tower? You can barely see the stratosphere now. All of the flowers are ruined. Fernando's work is ruined. Like, everyone's work is ruined. I mean, I'm not saying that I ca it cannot be fixed. I mean, that's what Justin is a doctor. Right, doctor? I know. But, but. <laughs> Can you tell us how much time and what do you expect as far as trying to fix it? How much is that going to, is that going to set you back as far as trying to finish the piece or? So. We were expecting to finish this piece over the next two days, which was preview Thursday, which turned into first Friday, and then we usually work later than uh, the buildings open. And honestly, we were getting to the point that by potentially Saturday, the, the mural was gonna be complete because Fernando had been doing shows in Los Angeles and we, we're going to have the three of us back for the first time since the beginning of the mural and with all three of us working uh, and the mural was filled in completely uh, we thought that we could finish this piece now what, what I believe that we're looking at because 
this did steal a lot of the motivation that we had on first Friday. I continued to work the whole, the whole time, but it was very hard for other people to find the ambition to tackle it. And so now I believe that we're looking at another two months of work and it, instead of it being completed and actually getting to move on to a, another piece uh, that we would be working on in another collaborative fashion. And I will say that the bigger problem is, is that now the people that actually rent space for me are very concerned that this has occurred. They don't want to keep their art here because of this situation, which on top of that, I'm losing artists. There are artists that will not, actually we will never see again that were involved in this piece because they've moved away to other places throughout the United States. And some of these people are from all over the world, including Argentina, Mexico. And so there's aspects of this that, that were wrecked that you will never lose this, or, or that we're adding this personality to the painting that we can't ever reclaim. Because almost like a fingerprint, uh, you know, painters can copy each other, but that, that life and that zest that these people were bringing to it can never be recreated because that was something that was so in the moment that we were so lucky to have. Just like the, 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 the homeless woman that walked in and was like, you know, she got her bag of all of her goods and she's like, I haven't painted in years, do you mind? And, you know, she just ran up there and started painting in the sky. And, you know, so, but, but where I'm most disappointed in all this is that, you know, we lost 10 plus people's work. We didn't just lose my work or we didn't lose, you know, two people's work. We lost 10, uh, 10 people that actually worked for hours and hours that are well-trained professionals that are used to making 25 to 100 bucks an hour as trained artists and now we've lost the ability to potentially sell this piece for the the fair value that uh, 18 foot by 6 foot piece would garner which is uh, honestly when when you talk about investing yourself into your art or your passion you know these people also expect to get something back out of this we do the art because we love it so much, but it, but we also do it so that we can then reinvest our earnings from the art into the next project, which tends to be grander in scale, which would hopefully bring in even more talented artists to collaborate and, and continue to grow what I believe is a burgeoning art community in the Las Vegas area, which I think we are all so happy and proud to be a part of. And unfortunately, with this situation that we have, it has brought a very negative connotation to a piece of art that, that I started in hopes of bringing something beautiful together with this very unique situation that honestly we, I was, I was told that we are doing something in this gallery that no one else in this town has been able to do and that no one else is doing and this is my little fingerprint and because of our materials you know we're using high quality oil paints and we're using high quality resins to do this, you know, we're able to give people that otherwise couldn't afford these types of materials an opportunity to work with some of the best materials. And so we're, we're also losing money in these regards. So now instead of it being worth whatever the price we might garner for, we've now lost on top of the, the real everyday cost, we've lost now a couple hundred more dollars in uh, oil paints that were just wasted. And that's, that's also a main frustration of mine because we're working so hard every day at our day jobs to invest our money to and show up after our jobs to give up time with our families because we love to do this so much. And then to watch so much work be gone in honestly less than 15 minutes of time uh, to leave one, one man in, in a gallery as a trusted gallery owner of our, of our small community here that we would never do this to him, so why would he ever feel as if he had a right to do it to all of us? Can you give us some of the names of the other other uh, artists that were collaborating in this? So well, there's we, Mark. We have Mark Goddard. Uh, we also have the master painter, who is a person I look up to, very well known in the art community, Tom Bassesti. Uh We have Vanna May. Huh. We have Fernando Reyes who painted this magnificent dancer. We have Nathaniel from Argentina. We have had 
so many people feel free and welcome to paint on this. Some of these people remain nameless. Some of them follow us. Some of them show up every every first Friday to see the the, 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 the progress. Reina, uh, Reina May, uh, it was a special moment for her a month ago before she moved to LA. She was here. This was her last stop before moving yeah. to LA. So that was like. And me and Van met. We we both worked at UNLV and CSN in the Fine Arts Department, and we both we worked together. I mean, we had done actually collaborative projects in the past. Vanna has a special place in my heart, and I mean, I can even say other people. You know, Rachel Hartman. It's, it's the actual. Sometimes it's just the ideas that these people brought. They they said because this concept that I actually created that started this uh, project was something that I thought about for months and months that we had put together, we had brainstormed, we had, I had brought what I thought were the best people at the time in to paint some of these specific aspects of this painting that otherwise, a, as a skillful painter, you're sometimes not able to paint what you see in your mind, so you need to go outside and find some of the, the, the very most talented people in order to do this. Find people that if I can't paint it, you know, or I can't do it, I've been able to find the right people to, that are willing to invest in me uh, in this collaborative effort. And to see that, and then to see people now, they've turned their backs on this because they invested so much time that they're unwilling to actually uh, invest any more time in this project due to the destruction that had occurred. I mean, not only that, but from what I've been uh, reading, they're afraid of this happening again. And the fear of that actually will, is going to be fixed because now we can't have what I deem as a, as welcoming and free environment because now we have to manage and lock all the doors without someone that's actually uh, a, an invested partner into the project. And I believe that the biggest problem was was that we let this individual come in at a later date in this project, and so he felt that he had no skin in, in the actual painting, and so therefore he uh, he pretty much uh, destroyed uh, the painting instead of actually being a, a collaborative uh, contributor in a way that would you know accentuate and beautify the painting, which is what I thought with this. The man has talent, it's just that he chose not to use what talent he has in painting and, and helping this piece grow and mature because I thought that as we're in our 30s and we're all gallery owners and we're all invested in the Las Vegas arts community that we would be able to come together and make the piece even better and, and to grow the piece even though it's in its later stages. You live and you learn. Uh, I'm jaded at some point also, because when you invest the type of time that we have, I, I have to question even my own judgment in the people that I'm bringing in and given the freedom to, to work on. And now I have to potentially just keep the trusted few that we've decided to bring into uh, the artistic armory, into the, this actual studio here at the Arts Factory. And so now I don't know if I can even be more as open as I was to, to just bringing in strangers to help work on things. Mm -hmm. Also, my question is that he said he was collaborating in the mural. So why damaging walls? Why damaging other pieces of art? When you, first off, are using oil, it's a very permanent basis. Secondarily, when you squeeze it out in such massive amounts, I mean, he wasn't painting, he was squirting, he was, I mean, he was exhausting all of the resources in such an abundant manner that there, there was no real way for us to salvage the amount of damage that he was doing without actually all the proper tools, which unfortunately with the other production studio, we took all of our, our major painting supplies down there because it's a bigger, more open space to work with, and so some of the tools that we had are gone. And so I was not able to scrape the painting uh, fast enough in order to salvage what had, uh, was the underpainting, which are now, honestly, completely 100% gone. And uh, in a restoration process, yeah, they can probably be redone, but there are places that, that can never manage and, and maintain the, the same life and 
virility that they had before. And all this took place within a matter of minutes? Within, with, honestly, the, the lowest estimate, and just to be fair, would be within 10 minutes, and the, the maximum of estimates would be 20 minutes of time were elapsed. But as you can see, the tubes were squeezed in such a fashion that the, the paint was just smeared and globbed all over the whole length of the canvas. And there was no real artistic merit in the way nope. he chose to do this. And then when, when I came back from being downstairs, the two, the two pieces, the duck, I told him, you know, do not touch the duck. And I told him, do not touch the alien. But besides that, everything else had been gone <coughs> except for these two, two items. And, you know, honestly, at which point, thank God that he salvaged those two because everything else had been so destroyed and, and, and uh, that these two, I think very key, key items show you the beauty that was in there, in the project, and they also show you the type of destruction that occurred within this very, very small time frame. I mean, this is just so sad. I mean, like I said, we had pictures uh, during the whole process. It was full of energy. It was people who walk in, and, and even the first time I saw it, I walked in and I was like, whoa. And right now when I walked in, because I wasn't able to be here during this Pretty Thursday and First Friday, I was speechless, and that rarely happens. This is a crime, and this kind of attitude, this kind of behavior has to be stopped. Because it's not fair. It's not fair to the arts community, to the 18B, to all of the artists. And just to let someone get away with it, people are saying what they want or what they think this person deserves. And I don't know. I don't know what's going to be more punishment showing all of this or other steps that might go into place, but this is just not fair. This is just not fair. And then now having to work on it for two more months on top of everything that you have going on with the other gallery, with your grand opening now on the 19th, other events by the end of this month. How are you going to find the time? I don't even know how you find the time. I mean, I took pictures of myself or you painting right here, <coughs> holding your baby. This is how much that's you dedication. were given to, that's dedication. And now everything's gone? My main point is, is that if we did this in his gallery, to his art, would he have been, I, I've been very silent about this. Uh, I want everyone to know that uh, sometimes more is done with silence and by being a passive uh, individual, uh, uh, I did open my doors to him freely as I have all the other artists that contributed, but all the other artists contributed in a way, in a fashion that brought life and, and brought beauty to this painting and I have to say that if we did this in his gallery, he would have been livid. We're talking about thousands and thousands of dollars of art that were destroyed uh, as fast. I mean, they, they were destroyed in, in one one thousandth of the time that it took to create it, which is the saddest thing, is that when, when we discuss how many hours were contributed, these hours are sometimes contributed in tandems of threes, fours. I mean, there have been up to five people standing in front of this for hours together working, you know, so to even quantify these things. It can't even be quantified in a proper manner to show not only that, how much heart and soul we have put into this project. And I'm, I, I feel at this juncture, after I've thought about this for the last 72 hours, you know, I don't want this to ever occur to anyone else who's trying to create a community uh, environment that's trying to bring artists, young and old, in together to work together. I don't ever want this to happen to them in a fashion that allows one perverse uh, situation to destroy something that I was actually so very proud of. I mean, I was. Yeah. I would smile coming into my own gallery, yeah. not in yeah, a did. narcissistic or like an egotistical way, but because after so many people worked on it to bring such beauty and life to this, I was so proud that I was able to give this opportunity to such a diverse crowd of, of, of 
I mean, honestly, human beings that are from all over the globe to have this really awesome, awesome chance to work together. And at the end, uh, you know, I, I always have a very positive attitude that we're going to persevere through this. We're going to find a way to create a more striking piece of art. The sad aspect of it is, is that now, instead of us getting to move on to the next in even more potentially incredible project, we have to now invest two more full months of time in repairing what uh, some, some man did in a very garish and malicious fashion that I can't even, I still am, I am myself speechless, which is also a very rare thing mm -hmm. that, because yeah. I don't want to become aggravated and honestly just angry. So, uh, but at the end, I believe that with the talent that has surrounded me and I'm so lucky to be around that we will have the opportunity to overcome this and create a better art piece. I think that this will hopefully bring together the art community in another way that maybe we haven't seen yet. I, as a new young gallery owner in Las Vegas, I feel uh, I've never felt so warm and fuzzy about the people that have crawled out of the woodwork uh, to support the the fact that we were doing something good that was positive and that uh, you know at the end of the day this is going to open up even hopefully more channels for us to bring art to Las Vegas and uh, hopefully uh, bring in more really really talented and incredible people whether it's here at the Arts Factory at Dr. Lepper's upstairs or if it's down at the Artistic Armory where we are producing with 10 other collaborative artists on a daily basis and so um, I always there is a positive to all the negativity that had occurred on Friday on Thursday night uh, which is uh, now we have a bigger stronger community I think that we'll move past it in the future and I think that this will be a better situation it's just going to take us two more months yeah. of very hard work and not only that, this is also, and I'm not talking just about you guys, about everybody that helped out with the mural, but there's some other artists that were waiting for the mural to be done and for authorization to use it for photo shoots, other things. Now, all of that is going to have to be put on the back burner. Other projects that you had going, uh, coming up with other artists, Heriberto Ibarra, who, which other artists do you have? Currently, we have projects with Dead Girls and Robots. Jeff Lewis, who specializes in Dr. Seuss paintings. We have Recycled Propaganda, who does a stencil and very politically motivated art pieces, that not only to talk about Mark and Fernando and Tom. As we look towards the future, you know, great artists are already have kind of mentally moved on to the next project and to start to brainstorm on what we are actually going to do the next time. And so we have the Blackbird show. We just got done doing uh, Artists for Autism. Uh, we did the 12 Inches of Sin. Yes. And so we've been working with some really great, I've been working with some, some people that are opening the doors and giving us some really amazing opportunities to do art here in Las Vegas, to get to, you know, 55 other countries, to get to on the international art scene, that energy that we use to look towards the future is now just again suspended in time for a period. And I will always look at the positive from this negative. I know that this is going to make us all much better artists. It's going to make us much safer artists. It's going to hopefully bring us uh, together. Uh, to close on a happier note, tell us about what's going on on the 19th. We are having the grand opening of the Artistic Armory. It is on 5087 South Arville, Suite E. We were hoping to have 50 artists. We charge no wall fees, and we are charging only a 15 to 20 percent commission due to the size. If you do sell a painting, uh, we were able to get approximately 200 people out to our, our, our soft opening, which was friends and family. We had food trucks. Uh, and, for, great. and for this next upcoming show, we're going to have uh, Melati, which is a, a dance group. Mark will be showing. I'm also, I have a full space where I'm going to show between five and ten artists. Uh, we will have fire breathers. We're going to have sliding through the food truck. We're also going to be catered by the Arts Factory. So we'll have all of your 
food and libations available. Uh, Sari, Sailor Jerry's is actually going to sponsor the event and we charge no door fees or anything. We are, uh, our mission is to bring in artists that are either too self-conscious or shy per se or potentially don't have the type of resources in order to rent or purchase uh, arts community space and we're hoping that this can help to grow whether you're a fashion designer, you design accessories, furniture, paintings, pictures by Eddie Berto, Ibera, Stephen Campbell, we're featuring Sloan Spencer. I think this is his first major show here in Las Vegas. We are hoping to have a turnout between three and 500 people. And yeah, I think that this is going to be another major boost for a now growing arts, arts scene as we are starting to now watch as our galleries are expanding out to the Strip and out south of the Strip, all connected in what is becoming a larger 18B. So what, the, what doesn't kill us, just make us more stronger. artistic? Make yeah. more. I feel like we're going to make it even better, and I've been referencing the fact that you know, I went back to Andy Warhol, and I mean, as strange as it is, we're in the, the arts factory, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the fact that him and Basquiat would actually paint over each other's paintings, and I feel like we, I, I've had to take on that mental mind state to know that even though this occurred, and even though it was such a beautiful piece, that the, the, the parts that were molested or destroyed or hurt are actually going to have a much stronger value. We're gonna, we're gonna bring more, hopefully, life to it, and I think that at the, the end of the day, this is gonna be a much better painting because we were challenged because I look exactly. at this as an obstacle yeah. more than an it, 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 there's many, we many will survive. battles <laughs> yeah. and yeah. war it hurt and us, but we have to like pick yeah. ourselves up yeah. and, you and have honestly, to just pick ourselves up and just keep on going we're going to continue to make art in a collaborative uh, uh, method all of us and yeah. so uh, I'm really excited about the future we want to thank you so much for making this first statement about the incident with us culture of the senses extremely thankful thank you very much thank you